Vertex 42's Timeline Template is a great tool for making great looking and well formatted timelines. There's two options. You can make historical timelines and you can also make project timelines. This template makes it very easy to format the information. Before I show you how to use the template, I wanted to talk to you about how to open the file. This is one template from Vertex 42 that actually uses macros, so I'm going to close this again. And I just wanted to run through that with you. So simply browse to the file and open it. And since this file has macros, Excel will ask you to accept or enable the macros. You should receive a security warning up here. All you need to do is simply click on options and enable content. And what this will do will enable a couple of functions used in this template to help update labels and to support dates prior to 1900. And that, that's all you have to do. Now, if you don't get the warning message and it doesn't give you a message that certain functionality has been disabled, then you may have your security turned down such that the macros are automatically turned on. Or you may have your security turned up high enough that it's not even prompting you and it's just turning them off by default. So if you feel like it's not working, then you can check the options. Simply go under the start button here, go to Excel options, go to Trust Center. Once you're in Trust Center, go into the Trust Center settings. Here you need to check a couple things. Make sure that it says show the message bar in all applications when content has been blocked. And also under macro settings, make sure that it says at least disable all macros with notification. If this top one is selected, disable all macros without notification, then it will simply turn off the macros and not even tell you. Probably not a good idea to pick the enable all macros. This can lead to problems if you happen to get a file from somewhere with some kind of malicious content. Okay, now I'm just going to close out of this and get back to the main file. When you first download it, it comes with an example of events from the life of Benjamin Franklin. To give you an idea of what you can do with this template and how to use it, I'm going to add three events. Now to make it a little bit easier, I'm going to split my screen here so I can see most of the graph without it moving on me. And then I'm going to come down here to the below the graph. You'll notice that there's a macro button called Update Labels. And then you'll see all the actual data that goes into the graph. And as long as there's a yellow section, you can just add data. If you need to add more rows, you can simply copy a row and insert it back in as long as you add it above this gray bar. So in this case, I'm going to add three events. As an example here, we're going to put in 1778. Benjamin Franklin was called to be the U.S. Minister to France. And when you're entering information, just simply go ahead and type it all in first. Don't worry about the formatting. He was then called in 1782 to be the U.S. Minister to Sweden. And here in 1775, he was actually the first U.S. Postmaster. Now, you don't have to worry about the order. It'll automatically put it in the correct places. You can sort the table if you want. Now, you'll notice over here there's a third column, and it's called height. What this height does is it simply defines how high it is above this bar. So anything positive will be above it. Anything negative will be below it. So if you look at the first event here, born in Boston, 1706, it's actually a height of 10. So that kind of gives you an idea. So to get those to show up, the first thing you have to do is kind of give it a height. I'm just going to put 10 on here arbitrarily for now for each of those. And you'll notice at the top it just added some text. The other thing you have to do to get the labels to all look right and updated is just update labels here. If you push that macro, it will actually update the text within these labels. Now to get it formatted height-wise, you just have to kind of tweak these numbers. It's not real hard. This first one here is 1778, which sits at the same time as Treaty of the Alliance with France. I am just going to try and get it into this little void here. So if I look at France, it's a 22 minus, so I'm going to go with a minus 25. See how that looks. Uh, not quite low enough, so I'm simply going to go one more lower. Perfect. The U.S. Minister to Sweden sits at the same time period as this line here, so I'm going to try and get it into this area, but I'm going to have to move this one first. And it's right here, the Great Britain. I'm going to make that a 10, give myself some space. 
And that means this one I'm going to put somewhere in between at maybe a 16. Perfect. And the last one, this first US Postmaster one right here, I'm going to try and get that up here. No big deal. I'm just going to come up here and type in 20, see where it gets me. And maybe a little more. Oops, not that one. 21. And there you go. Now that I've got all my information in and I've got the height set, I'm going to get rid of the bar here. 12 formatted and ready to go. I can use this any way I want now. I can copy graphics out to Word, to PowerPoint. I can put them in as images into other graphical representations if I'm doing some kind of poster. Uh, really, I can leave it in Excel. I can do whatever I want. So in this case, I'm going to move it over to PowerPoint. And my PowerPoint happens to have kind of a black motif to it. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on the graph here. I'm going to come up to design, go into the Microsoft chart styles that are predefined, and I'm going to pick this black with the white markers. I'm going to reformat that. Looks like they've got kind of a gray box. So I'm just going to right click inside of there, come back to format the area. I'm going to give it a solid fill. I'm going to make it black. And then you'll notice that my font kind of grew when it did that. So it's easy to fix. Just click on one of the labels and all of them will be highlighted. And then come up here to your home ribbon and I'm going to just use the down font size until I find one that kind of fits everything the way I like it. I think that's probably pretty good. And then I'm going to just drag this over a little bit to give some more room for these longer labels on the side here. It just kind of shrinks the inside part of that grab. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. It's well laid out. I have great markers everywhere where there's important dates. You can read all of the different lines. So now all I need to do is move over to my PowerPoint. I just simply select the graph. In this case, I'm going to copy it using Control-C. And then I'm going to click over on my PowerPoint. And you'll see here I kind of started this. I've got my title slide in the life of Benjamin Franklin. And I'm going to add my nice looking graphic. Now, in this case, since I don't want the Excel file fully embedded into PowerPoint, I'm going to paste special. And I'm just going to paste that as a, and we'll do a bitmap and click OK and you'll see that it drops that graphic right in there with all the information as it was formatted. This is now an actual bitmap file and I can go ahead and finish out my PowerPoint presentation for my school project or whatever else I'm doing. So the other thing I wanted to show you is how to use the project portion of the timeline template. The historical one's great for years, covered lots of time period. You basically enter in the year information. But the project's made to be much smaller time scale and to cover days, weeks, months. And you actually enter in date information instead of years. The other big difference between the two is the, the addition of these indicator bars here. You'll notice main task has this bar, it's blue up to a portion and it's gray. And basically it shows you the status of the main task based on the data in the table below. In this case, you can see that it's 75 days long and it's 80% complete. So the length of the bar is 75 days and it, the blue shows you it's 80% complete up to that point. So I can come in here and update it. Let's say we went ahead and finished that. I just put 100% there. Now you'll see that bar is turned completely blue. I can also add other bars. Let's add one to subtask 1.1 here. Just go ahead and find that. And let's say that subtask is supposed to be about 30 days. And maybe we've done, oh, 20% of that. And I'm going to put this back to 80 since it's a sub. And you go back up to the top. And you can see that now it's made a new bar here. So to move this label so it's not on top of the bar, you simply click it once and then click it again and then drag that one label down to where you're happy with it. So I'm just going to put it right underneath it. And now I've got a great looking project timeline.